I was inspired to write this book one fall morning a couple of years ago, October 2008. I opened the, an old desk drawer and at the back I was trying to clean out some files and at the back of the drawer I came upon a folder that my mother had given me decades earlier and it said Elkhead 1916-1917. I opened it up and it contained all of the letters that my grandmother had written home when she was teaching school in Elkhead with her best friend Rosamond Underwood the year of 1916-17. I started reading them and I couldn't stop. They were just riveting, funny, lively, full of stories about all of the people they met, the children they taught, complete with the dialect and the personalities, and I just thought this is the beginning of a really exciting book. They had gone to Smith College. They went back to their, to their town, Auburn, New York, which was a very wealthy, stultifyingly boring, upper-class city. And they did all of the things that proper young ladies were supposed to do. They attended chaperone balls. They went to society luncheons. They did a little bit of suffrage work, which they were interested in. And so they heard through a college connection that a very enterprising young lawyer, Princeton and Harvard graduate, on the western slope of Colorado was looking for two school teachers for a, a schoolhouse that had just been built high up in the mountains and their parents and Auburn society were completely horrified. Dorothy's mother thought they were going to be attacked by Indians or eaten by wild animals and the Syracuse newspaper had a headline saying, society girls go to the wilds of Colorado forsaking their lovely homes for the lives of a school teacher. One of the things that was surprising to me was how Im immediately they adjusted to a life that was totally unlike anything they had ever in their wildest dreams imagined. The closest town was 10 miles, 10, 15 miles away. Their, the closest neighbor was four miles away. It was, they were living in this settlement. It was barely a settlement called Elkhead. They lived with a family of homesteaders, Mr. and Mrs. Harrison and their three remaining children at home. And the house had just been built. The Harrisons had just moved from the valley to the mountains. And there was the front step consisted of a soap box. And they, the girls, as they were called, Dorothy and Roz, shared a bed that they reached, as my grandmother put it, by a, a set of rather shaky and ladder-like stairs. And Rosman said the, the room was so small that if one of them fell out of bed, they would roll right down the stairs. They took to this life with just extraordinary vigor and enthusiasm. They loved the Harrisons. They were full of admiration for their hardworking uh, sensibilities, their good sense of humor. And they loved the teaching for all the troubles they had in the, in the classroom. One of the themes that drives the book is the extraordinary sense of optimism that infused not only the entrepreneurs of Auburn uh, and the builders of the railroad that the, that the two school teachers took over the Continental Divide, but it infused the homesteaders too. And so there was this sense that anything could be accomplished. And the, the schoolhouse ended up becoming sort of, sort of a symbol of, of what you know a few people in the middle of nowhere their, their dreams for what they would become in an America that was just beginning to, to take off.